Welcome to the next installment in the UC9 video series. Today we're going to talk about Cisco Jabber. I mean, what is Cisco Jabber? There's a lot of confusion around what Jabber actually means. So before we define what it is, let's start with what it's not. Jabber is not a specific product. Rather, Jabber is an overall UC architecture. Jabber provides a simple and easy to use front end application known as a Jabber client that enables end users to utilize rich features and capabilities of the back end UC applications. The Jabber client can run on various endpoint devices and take delivery of these UC applications in multiple ways depending on your business. So what do I mean by all that? Well, let's break that down and drill into it. What capabilities are we talking about? So, first thing to think about, I am in presence. I am pretty straightforward. You have a client, I have a client, I send you a message, you respond back. One-on-one -on -one chat. If we want to pull somebody else in, we can make it a group chat. So, instant messaging back and forth. I can also do federations with this. And what do I mean by federation? Uh, you're in your company and I'm in my company and we want to talk intra-company. We can do that. So, I do have I am capabilities. Presence is our next step on IM. How do I know that you're available? I can get a status from your client. Are you logged in? Are you on a call right now? Are you in, not, or in a busy state? Uh, I can also integrate into your calendar, pull information from your calendar, you're in a meeting. This gives me an idea of what your availability is right now and whether I can chat with you or call you and so on. So I am in presence are some of the capabilities that you're going to find from the front end Jabber client. Other capabilities, call media capabilities. Call media. You can call media as the Jabber client acting as your soft phone. So it's an application running on your, let's say you've got a laptop PC. I'm in a hotel somewhere. You call me, I can use the PC to answer the call. Whether it's an audio call or a video call, it's terminating that media. So call media capabilities. Call control capabilities is your next benefit. What is called control? Well, that same Jabber client, I come back from the hotel room, I come into my office, I plug in, I have a desk phone next to me. I can use that Jabber client to control that desk phone. So what does it buy me? From there, I can say, go into my Outlook contacts, find your contact number and say, dial. Desk phone goes off hook and dials. I can also read information from that phone. I can find out things like uh, call history, right? Missed call, place call, receive call all as part of my Jabber client. I also have the ability to forward calls from my Jabber client. So call control as well as call media. Other benefits I get from this, other capabilities, message integration. So from a message integration perspective, my front end client can also play my messages back to me. So you call my office number, you leave me a message, I can from my Jabber client click on the messages section and say play it will play me that message back. So the front end for my messages. So that would be our message integration capabilities. Next one, content integration capabilities. So from my Jabber client, I can join a WebEx meeting, right? Click to join a WebEx meeting. Or let's say we're chatting, we're in an IM chat, and I want to share my desktop with you. I've got those capabilities as well. So going down the list, I am in presence capabilities, call media capabilities, call control capabilities, message integration capabilities, and content integration capabilities. Make sense? All right. So we talked about Jabber being a software, or the Jabber client being a software piece that you run. Where do you run that? We said multiple devices. What are those devices? I mean, in the computer world, I can be a PC or a Mac. In a tablet and smartphone world, I can be an iPad, an iPhone, supported Android devices, and Blackberries. In the virtualization world, I can be a virtualization client, such as uh, Cisco 6215. Or if you want to integrate it into, say, your web page, your corporate web page, I can use the Cisco Jabber SDK to integrate that in. So I have multiple platforms that I can run this client on. Now today, we do not have 100% feature parity between all platform clients, but that is the direction of the future of Jabber. One client, multiple platforms, feature parity. 
looking at. So once we've got client or Jabber client installed, we need to tell it some information. What are which backend services are we going to integrate into for the service type that you desire? In other words, who is my IM presence provider? Who is my call media provider? Who is my call control provider? Who is my message provider? And who are my content providers? Right. So now we start talking about delivery message. How do we make this work? So in the IM presence world, let's say I've got a LAN on my LAN. I've got a computer who's running a Jabber client. It can be a PC or a Mac in this case. Okay? If he is going to do an IM session, I need some server that's going to control the IM. Right? Assume I've got two folks on the same LAN, both running Jabber. They can come over here to a present server, register their client with that present server. I now have IM back and forth. That is an on-prem option. Another option that you've got with that. Assume that I have got firewall here out to the internet to WebEx. Okay. I can also have a hosted version of I am in presence. All right, so those are my two different delivery options in this world. If I am hosted out on WebEx, I automatically have federations. That's taken care of by the provider. If I do an internal presence server, I'm really saying internal network is the priority. I can build federations between him and somebody else, but that's manual and something we'd have to do. Those are my two delivery options from an I am in presence world. Next thing we talked about, call media, call control. So let's say in this world, I've got an IP phone sit here. Technically, he'd be connected. How am I going to control that phone? Well, this Jabber client has to talk to who's ever controlling this phone. So in a Cisco world, that's call manager, communications manager. right? So I have hooks from this presence client into that call manager. If I want to tell this phone to dial, I tell call manager to tell this phone, phone to dial, and he does. Make sense? All right. That would be call control. Call media implies that my voice is actually going to come here and not here. So in that case, I'm acting as a soft phone. I still need somebody to do my call control as well as my media, right? So I'm still talking to call manager. At the end of the day, the call manager, communications manager, who is going to, the person doing my call control and my call media. If I am out here on the internet, and earlier I said I'm in a hotel room on a laptop, pretend that's a laptop, I'm going to create a VPN connection back here so I can talk to call manager. And then a call gets routed out to me. Make sense? Okay. Other options we talked about, right? Message retrieval. Who, what is my message integration? In a Cisco world, that is unity connection. So my client has now a connection back to this Unity connection. And from that, when you leave me a message that goes in my Unity connection, I can play it from my Jabber client. And the last thing is video. And video is a little tricky. Uh, video can be call manager, VCS, WebEx telepresence, or free Jabber video. So depending on what you want to do with video, multiple ways to do this. In a call manager 9.x world, and we're talking 9091 here, if I have a video phone, right? I don't know how to draw a video phone, so we're going to call him a video phone. Um, he registers to call manager. If he's going to call another video phone, I'm going to call that phone, four digit dial that phone, you or I dial that phone, and I've got video. Right? I don't need to do anything else. I'm golden. In my Jabber client, I can also register him to call manager. He can speak video. So call manager can be my back backend video. Other options. In a VCS world, I can have a VCS server, and then out of my DMZ, I can have a VCS expressway. My Jabber can also register to those guys. So I've got the ability to tie the Jabber into either call manager or the VCS, VCS expressway world. 
if I'm out here on the internet, I may decide that I want to use the VCS configuration because most of my dialing is URI. I'm not on the internal network and I don't want to provide a VPN to it. That would be an option. Two other video models that Jabber can register to are kind of apart from your infrastructure here and they're internet based. One is WebEx Telepresence. So under the WebEx, you can have a WebEx Telepresence. This client can register to WebEx Telepresence. You've also got one other model out here, which is Cisco's Free Jabber. Uh, Cisco's Free Jabber is a free client you can download, register to Cisco, you now have free video. So those are my options within delivery. So whether I'm on-prem, whether I'm hosted, where is my I am in presence going to register to, where is my call media and call control going to register to, where is my message integration going to register to, and where is my video control going to register to. So all of these different delivery options play a part into the overall Jabber architecture. So let's talk about the different flavor of Jabber offerings and how they work. So we hear some of these quite a bit in the market, uh, so let's address them. Jabber for Everyone is a, a good program right at the moment. What is it? How does it work? What does it provide? Jabber for Everyone is free if you have a Cisco environment. Essentially what you're getting out of that is you're getting a presence server and on these Jabber clients I can run IAM and presence and call control. All right? So call control, IAM presence back through the presence server and the call manager. So if you are running a call manager in Unity today, this is a good add-on. There's no extra licenses. You know, it's just configuration work to actually get it set up. What it doesn't give you is call con or a call media. This Jabber client cannot act as a phone. Right? I've got no configuration or licensing within call manager to make that happen. But I can do call control. So I do get some benefits for it. One we hit on a minute ago, another one you're going to hear a lot about is Cisco Free Jabber. What is that? What does that mean? So out in the cloud, Cisco has a free Jabber client. If you go to Cisco, CiscoJabberVideo.com, you can sign up and create an account. Your account is going to be your user ID at Jabber.com. You can download the client, register to you know, ABC at Jabber.com, whatever your ID is. Now you can do a URI call to anyone in the world that can take one. Anyone can call you on that address. It's a good way to try some free video. It's kind of limited in the fact that it's Jabber only and you don't have any control over the domain. It's always your idea at jabber.com. But it's a good way to get it started. So it is video only, it is URI dialing only. Other one that they've got, Jabber for Cisco WebEx Telepresence. We alluded to that a minute ago. Hosted in the WebEx world, I have the ability to buy a hosted subscription model. I can support multiple endpoints in that model, not just Jabber, but Jabber is one of their options. With that, I can also do content sharing. So where you hear that one a lot, Jabber for WebEx Telepresence, if you want to try video for a while, this gives you a little more feature than the free one. It is a subscription base, but can kind of get your feet wet. The other one you're going to hear about is Jabber with full UC support. That is all of the integrations that we talked about, all of the different capabilities in a Cisco environment. So those are the different flavors of Jabber that you can hear out there and what they actually mean and what comprises those. So which Jabber is right for you? That depends. That's a hard one to answer. That really comes down to what capabilities best fit your business communication plan. In other words, what do you want to do with it? I've got multiple options out there for me. Right? What best fits your needs? And what devices are you going to run this on? Are we talking software only? Do we want hardware endpoints? Do I want uh, a combination from uh, simple phones to a uh, PC application to a room system and tie them all together? So the idea really in this world is to figure out what you want to use it for and take one of the models and customize it until it makes sense for you. Does that make sense? Thank you very much for watching and have a great day.